This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust or is it <clears throat> a real POS? You need Shopify for retail. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify POS has everything you need to sell in person. Go to shopify.com slash system, all lowercase, to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash system. Today on CityCast Houston, producer Carleon Jones is joining me to talk about all the news from last week's storm that impacted so many people in our city and surrounding areas. From power outages to tense press conferences, we're breaking down the aftermath of the storm and giving you tips on what to do now. Hey, before we get to today's conversation, I have a quick favor to ask. CityCast is doing our annual listener survey, and it would really help us out if you took it. Now, if you took last year's survey, I'd be so grateful if you would take it again because we can't use last year's data anymore. Please go to citycast.fm slash survey to take the survey. It's only seven minutes long. I timed it. It's quick. That's citycast.fm slash survey. And when you take the survey, you'll be eligible to win a $250 Visa gift card and some CityCast Houston swag. So go to citycast.fm slash survey or click on the link in our show notes. It's Tuesday, May 21st. I'm Rahil Ramzanali, and here's what Houston's talking about. Hey, Carly. So let me start with this. Where were you when that storm just moved through? Luckily, I was at home, uh, sitting on my couch watching TV, and then I didn't even realize the storm was coming, honestly. So I was sitting there watching TV, and then the next thing I know, like I'm hearing everything outside just kind of like go crazy. I hear like trash cans like flying around and everything. So I went and got my trash can from outside and my TV turned off and everything, but I was able to still have power. Luckily, I wasn't one of the people that lost power. So thank God for that. But um, it sounded so terrible outside. It was scary. You know, it looked like just a normal summer storm. In fact, I was taking my oldest daughter to volleyball practice. And usually when I drop into volleyball practice, I'll go play pickleball. So I was texting my group of players. I was like, oh, it looks like we'll be good. There's a storm moving in like around seven. So we'll be fine. Like, let's go play. And then when I dropped her off, soon as I dropped her off, I started getting notifications like, you know, get ready. There's this really strong storm moving in, 80 miles per hour winds. And so I just hunkered down and stayed at volleyball practice. And let me tell you, there's nothing like the screams of second grade to high school girls when power goes out and they're all together. It was the funniest thing. Like literally the power went out for 30 seconds at this place. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're all just going, ah, just freaking out. But man, it was scary. It got so dark so fast. Mm -hmm. And obviously this is the biggest story of the week. And there's still so much happening from the storm, Carly. It ran through the city last week, which we already know. It produced two tornadoes that lasted about a minute and had winds peaking at 100 miles per hour at some places. It unfortunately also claimed seven lives from the storm or the impacts from it. And look, we've seen the damages on social media, on the local news. Downtown is just so eerie to look at because of all the windows that were blown out. And most of the weekend was spent cleaning up as much as we could to get things back to normal, trying to restore power. So let's just go around and talk about the various stories that came from the storm. I'll start it off power outages, right? Like that's the biggest thing. Power outages impacted more than a million people, Carly, initially as transmission towers were knocked down. And those were some of the scariest images. Mm -hmm. It was so crazy. The other night we went to take home uh, one of my friends and he was in an area where they have like no power. The only thing that had power was the McDonald's like by his house. But at nighttime, it just felt like I was in a scary movie or something. Like I was like in The Purge and somebody was going to like jump out in the highway or something like that because it was just so dark. I've never seen it that pitch black in a neighborhood ever in my life. I was like, this is actually so creepy. Like I couldn't imagine having to do that for days in a row. And then for some places they were saying like it might last weeks. So I'm like, 
Yikes. Yeah. So Centerpoint and crews from outside of the city have been working to restore power and every day more and more people are getting back online. The numbers are constantly changing. But yeah, it is absolutely terrifying that this just happened during a freak storm. And I always have PTSD when it comes to hurricanes because of Hurricane Harvey that we all went through, Hurricane Ike. You think about some of the other ones and major storms as well. But now it is being taken to another level because you're looking at the damage from a storm that just moved in. And yes, it was a very powerful storm, but I can't even imagine what would happen with a hurricane now. And I started thinking about this, and these are just some theories, right? Is it because it was already wet, so the ground was already saturated and things were falling over because of the powerful winds? Was it just because of the powerful winds? Was it because of last summer? when it got so hot and everything got dried out and we still don't know just how much infrastructure was damaged from that historical heat dome, or maybe it's a combination of everything. And I just could not believe how bad the damage was. By the way, the head lineman for Santa Point, Ed Ramirez said, it's gonna take us a little bit, be patient with us. We're working as hard as we can to get all of this back up for you guys. So look, I know people are still without power. It's scary, but gosh, man, they are working fast at Center Point. Yeah, and I've seen some people, like one of my friends, they got their power back on Friday after the storm. And then for some reason, Saturday, it turned back off again. So I don't know like what's going on, but I know they're trying to work hard to get it back on. And hopefully it'll be fully restored to everybody as soon as possible. Because living without power, especially in this heat, especially in Houston, Texas, just alone. Oh, my God, it's terrible. And then another thing that was going on is like all the debris that was going on everywhere. There were trees landing on houses, landing on cars and everything like that. So a lot of people have been trying to figure out how to get the trees away from their houses and everything. And so I'm going to plug Hey Houston here because there was a great article written in Hey Houston about uh, how to get trees removed from your house. And there was also one on there about like generators and how you can safely get them working and everything like that for the future. So definitely go check out Hey Houston. If you're not signed up, go ahead and subscribe. But a thing that I saw the city doing was they were asking residents to kind of like separate their debris into six categories. Categories. So they had garbage, vegetation, construction, demolition, appliances, electronics, and household hazardous waste. So that's one thing that they're trying to do to, I guess, help this process get done quicker to remove the debris. Um, because trying to drive around with all these trees everywhere and everything, like every time I've gone anywhere since the storm has happened, I've been seeing trees like falling over everywhere in the city and it's just so difficult to get around. So if you are trying to figure out anything, another thing you can do is report your debris. You can call 311 or use the 311 app as well to get this debris removed. Yep. And there's still already so much debris in our region from the storms that happened earlier this month, right? Like the Kingwood area got hit so hard. Yeah. Yeah. And now you add in all of this. This is going to take a couple of months to just clean up. Also, HISD, let's talk about schools, right? Almost 220 HISD campuses opened up on Monday, but several were still closed due to damage and power outages. Cypher ISD was closed fully on Monday because families were without power. Spring Branch, Aldine, Channel View, Galena Park, Katy. Those are some of the other ISDs that were closed as well because of power outages. So it's fluid. And as families get their power back, schools will start opening up. But gosh, just, you know, the end of the year is so close and you've got this going on. You know, we're thinking about everybody. I know it's hectic. I know it's stressful. But, you know, day by day, things will get better. Yeah, I saw that 54 schools were still closed on Monday, which is like crazy. Um, but it's better to have those kids at home safe with their parents. You know, that's definitely like the priority here. Um but with the end of the school year being right around the corner, like some people only have like a week or two left of school. I'm wondering how it's going to affect the school year because, you know, schools get paid based on how many times children are actually in attendance at the school. So I'm pretty sure they don't have any more like weather days saved up for the rest of the year. So I'm like wondering if it's going to backpedal on them next year where they have like a longer school year. Yeah, I'm not sure how that's going to play out or if they just extend this school year out because of everything that's happening. So those are things that are going to change a lot and we'll keep you posted when we hear about it. And of course, check with your ISDs as well. I know they're in constant communication. We've been getting a lot of messages 
from Fort Bend ISD. And I know my friends in HISD have been getting messages as well. So just, you know, stay in touch with your teacher, stay in touch with administration, and they'll keep you posted. Also, this week, you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but temperatures are going to be hitting dangerous levels. We are to that point where, yes, it's going to be in the 90s, but it's going to feel like it's in the triple digits. And people without power are already going through enough. There are cooling centers across the city and surrounding areas. So, you know, check out those. We will link that information in our show notes as well. But just try to be safe. Check in on people who you think are without power. Just check in on friends. Make sure that they have power because they might not say anything. I found out like four friends yesterday are still without power. And I'm like, wait, what? why don't you just come over to our house? Like, come come hang out with us, you know, because it is so hot out there. Yeah. Hopefully everyone is back online here this week, but still it's going to be hot to start this week already. Mm-hmm. And then one more thing I wanted to mention is that the Better Business Bureau is saying that they want Houstonians to definitely be aware about scams after this storm, which mm-hmm. it's so terrible how people really just take advantage of you at the worst moments, but it's definitely something that happens. So uh, we also linked an article about that, about how you can like make sure you're safe from scams because there's going to be people coming door to door saying, oh, I can help you repair this on your house. Oh, I can help you do this. And don't fall for it. Go with your insurance companies. If you don't have insurance, go look at something that is like actually registered on the internet that you know is actually through and through going to actually help you. Don't trust these sites and watch out for scams. Yeah. And if you are approached by somebody claiming that they're part of FEMA, make sure they have identification. I heard Judge Dalgo really stress that the other day as well. Ask for identification. Always double, triple check if you can. Call somebody, ask them to check for you as well. Because yeah, there is just so much scamming going on post-storm. We saw it with Hurricane Harvey. We've seen it with other storms as well. So be safe out there. And also, Early voting has started, by the way, for the May 28th primary runoff election, which is going on for both Democrats and Republicans. You can find locations with the link in our show notes from our friends at Houston Landing. So I wanted to mention that, yes, you can still go vote for the primary runoff, which is again on May 28th, but early voting has started. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust or is it a real POS? You need Shopify for retail. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify POS has everything you need to sell in person. Go to shopify.com slash system, all lowercase, to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash system. Okay, Carly, we still have rapid fire to do today, and we still have a lot of stories that we haven't talked about that have come to light from last week's storm. So the first one I want to bring up, and this is one of the saddest stories to come out from the storm, and this is regarding the neglect of seniors at an independent living facility in North Houston. Residents at Independence Hall on airlines say that property management just left them after the storm moved through. And of course, the storm damaged a building. They were without power. They were left without electricity. And management was just like, no, we're out. And they were left to basically fend for themselves. Houston Fire Department Chief Samuel Pena said that a lot of them have told him directly that they haven't had anything to eat in quite a while. Oh my God. And they were out there without any electricity, no management checking on them. I also saw that State Representative Armando Wally messaged Mayor Whitmire about this situation. Mayor Whitmire was on top of it. He actually went there and took a look at what was happening. And he said he has plans to find a way to help all these residents. Residents, and he's also going to get the housing department involved to see what options they have because this neglect, while it is coming to light right now, it's been going on for a while. So just a sad, sad situation. Yeah, this is complete BS. Like, I hate that this is happening, especially like to the elderly community like this. I know that when they go into these like independent living facilities, they're there because they want to be able to live on their own and kind of still like remain, you know, independent. And so for management to be here, knowing that they still have some responsibility to try to check on these people, make sure that they're okay for them to just leave is sickening. Like I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. I would be so pissed if I was one of these elderly people's child or anything like that. I probably would go file a lawsuit, honestly, because 
yeah, that doesn't even make sense. It's just heartbreaking. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what actions Mayor Whitmire takes. We'll see what actions the families are going to take as well. But it was just a heartbreaking story. But good that people have come out to help them and the city and residents are now helping each other out and making sure that these residents are okay at Independence Hall. Yeah, I'm happy to see that. I love when Houston comes together. Okay, I've got one more story from the storm. And we've been talking about the tension between Mayor Whitmire and Judge Hidalgo. But for the first time ever, they had a press conference together and things got awkward. (laughs) Judge Hidalgo opened the press conference that featured local leaders. She spoke for 15 minutes in English and she traditionally speaks in Spanish as well after. But after her first 15 minutes, Mayor Whitmire spoke and then Mayor then said that he wanted Harris County Precinct 4 Commissioner Leslie Briones to speak to provide an update. But then Judge Hidalgo said she wanted to speak with the Spanish media first because she promised them. The mayor pushed back and Hidalgo responded by saying that she didn't feel comfortable giving special treatment and that all four precincts in the county were impacted, not just Briones' area. So, Carly, have you had a chance to watch this, by the way? Yes. And I have to say, it was beyond awkward, Raheel. Like, beyond awkward. First of all, when you're watching it, you can see that the mayor, like, he looks pissed. He's just so annoyed by her coming in, like, right after he's, like, trying to wrap up. And she's just also, like, obviously very pissed off or annoyed. It was such an awkward exchange back and forth. And you can kind of just tell that they don't like each other too much, which hopefully for the sake of the city, we can kind of like mend that relationship some. But right now I'm not seeing it going anywhere good. Yeah. Credit to Judge Hidalgo. Later on in the day, she was actually asked about that exchange. And she said, quote, do we do better when we work together, respect each other, get along of course of course but i just don't think that's the topic for right now so yeah i can't wait to see how this dynamic plays out it's obviously a dynamic that is tense there's no other way to put it than they just don't like each other yeah it's very simple some people just are water and oil you know and this kind of seems like what this is right here Mm -hmm. okay carly i know this has been a lot of information i know people are still recovering from last week's storm, but I still want to do only in H-Town because there are some crazy things happening in our city and surrounding areas. So why don't you kick it off? What do you got for only in H-Town? Okay. So one of my favorite things to see on newscast are the investigative reporters go in and go dive deep into these crazy stories going on in Houston. Because like without them, we would not know a lot of the crazy like BS that goes on. So KPRC's Channel 2 investigative reporter, Bill Spencer, he tracked down this real estate shark who was accused of stealing over $25,000 from families in Houston. So the owner of Collective Homes Mercantile, Sherry Ray Meekins, she basically was accused of stealing all this money from about three families, which more families were said to come forward afterwards after they seen that this investigation was going on. So really, there might be more than $25,000 out there that's been lost. She was supposed to be basically selling valuables from these families' homes after their loved one passed away. So let's say there was like a picture or something like that in the house that you wanted to get rid of. She was telling these families, I'll sell it for you and give you 60% of the proceeds. But instead, they got nothing, nothing at all. She was just running off with the money, basically. Um, There was one family that lost over $14,000, another family, $7,000, and another family, $5,000. Now, What was even crazier is that with one family, she was supposed to sell this woman's late mother's black Lexus, right? Well, when KPRC hunted her down, they found the Lexus sitting in Meekin's driveway. She had been driving this Lexus for the past 16 months. Oh, my God. Registered still under the late woman's last name. Can you believe this? Like... It's just sitting there. She's still driving it like it was her own personal car. So Bill found her and he actually got the chance to speak with her. And so Meekin says that she's blaming everything on the mental depression she's had following the death of her son in 2020. She says that she's truly sorry about everything that happened and is 
planning on trying to make it right with the families, but says that it's going to happen a few months down the line because right now she says she's completely broke. So some of the families took this to small claims court and everything and they won. But of course, since she doesn't have any money, they have not received anything back. So this whole story is just like super crazy. And I'm really hoping these families get their money back that they deserve because, you know, I can't imagine losing someone and then losing all this money in the back end of it as well. Yeah. It's just tough all the way around. Oh my gosh. That is such an only in H town story. I feel like we always have scams going on in this section. It's so wild that this lady who's an estate sales shark mm-hmm. and is not doing her job and she's supposed to give the family 60% of the proceeds, right? So that seems like a good deal because as you mentioned, you're already dealing with the stress of losing a loved one. Then you have to sell off all their possessions. It's hard. It takes a lot of time. So to have someone come do this for you sounds like a blessing. Like, okay, we'll give you 40%. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But instead, they got nothing. That is just so heartbreaking. Yeah, it's it's tough. Okay, my only in H-Town is, well, only in H-Town plus, okay? Because Go Topless Jeep Weekend has come (laughs) and gone. And if you don't know what that is, it's the annual party on Bolivar where Jeep owners, well, it started as Jeep owners, come to Bolivar Peninsula and they just party it up like they're on spring break. So it's basically adult spring break, okay? It has turned into a massive thing. It started a while back and it was just like local Jeep clubs meeting up and it was cool. It was tame. And then it just evolved into a 100,000 person party. And of course, there's crazy things happening because there's alcohol, there's the beach, there's all these Jeep clubs. And I think at this point, it's just anybody just shows up. Well, last weekend was no different because... Unfortunately, one person died during a shooting. There were two shootings that happened. One person did die. Now, as I mentioned, there were over 100,000 people who attended. According to the county, they reported that more than 240 arrests were made and 800 calls were made to the authorities for help. Oh, my God. That is nuts. I have really close friends who live down on Bolivar in the summer, and they just leave. They're like, we don't want any part of this. Local businesses this year were like, we want no part of this. They just closed down and left. That's crazy. I think that the only in Bolivar part is really the 240 arrest. 240 people got arrested. That is like, what? that's mind blowing. Like, what the heck was going on down there? That had to be a wild party to say the least. So yeah. um, <laughs> I'm glad that, you know, most of them were okay though, I guess, because this is, that's intense. That's intense. Yeah, it's nuts what happens down there, but that is so wild. And I'm glad that the weekend is over, that Go Topless Jeep weekend is done. But yeah, I, I know they prepare for this. I was reading up on it. They had so many extra people come in to help and Even with that, look, it's going to get out of control with 100,000 people, but uh, only 240 arrests. I guess that's good. (laughs) Like When you look at the percentages, that's good. But gosh, unfortunately, one person did die. And that's the heartbreaking part. Yeah, that is. Carly, thank you so much for joining me today. I know there was a lot of information and we're keeping everyone in our thoughts and prayers. If you're still impacted from the storm, again, take it day by day and things will get better. Yeah, I hope everyone is doing good. Prayers and blessings to everyone. Talk to y'all next time. That was Carly on Jones. We've linked all the stories and info in our show notes. Hey, share your stories from the storm with us by sending us a message on Instagram at CityCastHouston and follow us there if you already aren't following us. That will do it for today. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned something new. I heard you twice when you just said that. Oh, because I said cool, cool. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm clearly delusional today. Okay. (laughs) Let's get it.